Welcome back to week 12 of the JW Square Scares and Prayers. In this show, we come your nerves on some suds that must be in your lineups. We challenge questionable starters, and we offer some prayer flies to help with those bye weeks or to fill that final flex. To any new listeners, I am Scar. He is Tim. This is JWB. To any returning listeners, y'all are the absolute best. If you love fantasy football, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and join us on our journey to 2,500 subscribers, which we are hoping to reach by the end of the season. Welcome. You're listening to JWB Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening. All right, guys. As always, we get started with our squares for the week. Now, squares are players who have legitimate concerns around them, but we're here to tell you that despite all of those concerns, we are comfortable putting them right into our lineups. So, Tim, start us off with your square play for week 12. So, coming a week out, a week off of injury, Nico came back. I'm going with Nico Collins this week. Nico came back with a 7 for 11 and 65 mark. I think uh, I think he's going to build on that this week against Jacksonville. They put up 34 points in the, the first meeting on the road, and now they have C.J. Stroud at home with more experience under his belt. I think that this offense is just going to keep chugging along. And something uh, um, to note with Nico is that when he scores a touchdown, he goes top 12. And then the other six weeks, three of them have been top 28, and the other three have been outside the top 36. So for me, he's uh, he's a strong play inside the top 36, and I think that – potentially he's a very strong play for top 12 because if he gets a score, he's hit it every single time. So this week I'm going with Nico. He's ECR uh, top 20. And I think that he, uh, he hits that marker better. I'm, I'm going to, I'll go. Uh, I'll bet he, I'll bet he scores a touchdown this week. I'm going to go top 12. I like it. We're, we're starting off hot here. We get a top 12 week from Nico Collins. Um, I think it's a really, really strong matchup here for Nico Collins. He's going to be playing against, Basically, the right, he plays majority of the time over the left, but they do move their wide receivers all over the place there. But both sides of the ball here are going to be good matchups for the Houston wide receivers. You know, CJ Stroud and the Houston Texans are going to throw the ball a whole ton here. Um, wide receivers going against at least the primary corner that Nico Collins should, fa Nico Collins should face score 0.36 fantasy points per route run, which is amongst the highest percentage of wide receivers against opposing cornerbacks. Uh, to give you guys a comparison, which I'm going to mention later uh, in a different take there, we have a player like, well, Darius Sneed is 0.17. So you're getting double the amount of fantasy points per uh, route run for wide receivers against you know, uh, Nico Collins corner for this week, then versus whoever, whoever is playing uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. So I, I think it's a very good matchup. I like your point about touchdowns. If he scores a touchdown, it's going to be top 12. Um, I think it's a good week for both of the wide receivers, but I think it's very fair to feel Nico might even match up better than Tank Dell. Something that's also interesting with Nico is that he's, he's probably one of the least, um, dependent wide receivers when it comes to the teams actually scoring points where if you look at his his production over the season he's scored a lot of his points in games in which the texans haven't scored high high number of points so i don't think that this has to be a high scoring game for him to hit these marks or hit marks that are very startable and very playable but i think it's just a bonus where you hit a, a new ceiling when they do uh go above 20 points love it and I also love Kyron Williams this week, guys. I'm going right to him without hesitation as a top 18 play this week. Honestly, if I was as bold as Tim, I'd probably say top 10. So I really do like Nico or Kyron Williams this week. ECR has him at RB29. I think that's just a slow mover. I'd be very surprised if he falls outside the top 24 in ECR when it's all settled and done. It's just because right now he still technically has that IR designation. So maybe uh, the accuracy rankers who do not have uh, updates yet might have him way down and that could that could be what's pulling this down as much um, but the last time we saw Kyron in action we got a 20 carry 158 touchdown game and it was against well Arizona who he plays this week uh, and not a whole lot needs to be said about this matchup we have talked about Arizona seemingly every single week because one of the first things I do for the show is I what running back gets to play Arizona this week and that's probably going to be one of my picks it's just it's a matchup thing at this point in the year um, Kyron's lowest snaps this season was 65%, and that was in week one. And that was higher than any single mark that Daryl Henderson played for the entire month that Kyron was out. I wouldn't count on Freeman seeing greater than 35% of the snaps. Henderson was waived yesterday, but then he signed with the practice squad uh, today, and Kyron Williams logged a full practice. So I don't expect him to be uh, recalled. 
And I think that the Rams making this action shows a good amount of confidence in Kyron immediately. I think he probably could have come back last week. They want to make sure he was 100%. And, well, they gave him a good matchup. Last week was pretty tough for running for the running back matchup, where this week is just fantastic. Arizona, 30th to opposing running backs, 30th over the last month. They're the only team who's allowed more than 15 touchdowns. Or they're only one team who's allowed more than 15 touchdowns to running backs this season, and that's Carolina. Uh, running backs versus Arizona have 37% more red zone touches than any other team against running backs. Kyron has the ninth most red zone touch percentage in the league, despite missing an entire month of the season. So there should be red zone work here. There should be volume here. It's a soft defense. Not much more needs to be said here. Kyron Williams is a smash play in his return. Yeah. And with Cooper cup potentially dealing with another injury, there might be even more passing work, which you've already seen that he has that ability, which just gives you more points per touch that he gets if um you know he's involved in that and i expect him to be as well i think this is a smash i think 29 is absurd because i think he could easily go top 12 like you you're saying 10th i i this does would not surprise me whatsoever yeah i think he probably settles honestly top 15 i think when you see ours all said and done this is going to be like rb 15 you're going to see on saturday when you go uh i'm just going to be ahead of that I, I already have him like rb 14 in my preliminary ranking so i'm i'm pretty comfortable with him uh, but we're going to move into our accountability section as we do every single week because we want to hold ourselves accountable for our picks last week we had two players fall right on our line both of our scares we were seeing outside the top 24 fell at 23 that was with adam theo and isaiah pacheco we missed some terrible core in top 12 what a disaster uh, over there in Washington last week. And then JSN top 36, finished at wide receiver 50. We hit on Devin Singletary. We said top 24. He was the RB4 on the week. Ty Chandler top 24. He was the RB16 on the week. It doesn't count against our record, but I do want to say that at the end of that prayer segment, we did mention that Elijah Moore, it was a good matchup there despite the the low scoring affair just because slot wide receivers versus Pittsburgh are always a valid play. And that held true. He finishes the wide receiver 32, which we said if you were looking for wide receiver four, it was going to be a good value. It turned out that way. We were two and four on a picks, 50% of the season. We're hoping to do much better than that this week. Uh, and we're going to keep things pushing here into the hardest section, in my opinion, to hit here because you really got to plant your flag on some guys with our scares. Now, our scares, we're not saying you have to bench these players, despite what the thumbnail might tell you. Thank you for clicking on the video. We appreciate you here with us. Please subscribe and help us on our journey to 2,500 subscribers by the end of the season. If you are ready to hear these takes, and Tim's going to get us started off the scares, we're just telling you to consider benching them look at the other options you have in your team hear us out on our case against the player and go into the comments and let us know your other options we'll let you know if you should bench the player for someone else on your team so tim who is your scare for this week going with derrick henry and i know we just talked about carolina allowing 15 plus uh, rushing touchdowns on the season but i don't think that that number is truly telling and i'm going to tell you why so they've had three games um where they've allowed 33 or more points cowboys 33 Lions 42, Miami 42. They're averaging 27 points allowed on the season. You take out those three games, it's at 21 points per game. As well as, okay, they're 31st against the against the, the running backs in points per game. Or, um, excuse me, 31st against the running backs in yeah, points per game. And then they're ninth against wide receivers. They allow less than 200 yards passing and just 19 completions. So if we're looking at this game, right, we're expecting what out of Will Levis? And for me, as Derrick Henry has only uh, averaged 12 touches and 33 yards, actually 32 yards per game the last two weeks, as they continue to um, kind of reel his, his production and his workload backwards. And uh, they, I'm sorry, I, I'm, what, I can't remember his backup right now. Um, yeah, Tajay Spears. Yeah, as Tajay Spears gets more work. So we're really looking at potentially what goal line work. And as Will Levis has played, They've only averaged 16 points per game. If you take out his first week against Atlanta, they're averaging 12 points per game the last three weeks he's played. So what touchdown work are we looking at? What goal line work? So you'd have to really be expecting a great a great game from Levis, to, for me, in my opinion, for Derrick Henry to really reach those levels of RB11, which he currently is for consensus. I don't think he he uh, hits those marks. I'm going to say he's probably going to be like back-end or, or I should say like low 20s, like 21, something like that. But I'm going to say he's outside the top 24 this week. With the, the lack of workload, the lack of yardage, and the lack of touchdowns, this could easily be a three to five point week unless they have they completely turn around and they just make it a Derrick Henry game. But from what I'm seeing trending, I see it going in the exact opposite way. As well as that 16 point per game mark, that's like playing Baltimore four straight weeks in a row and um, 
getting their their mark on the season at 16 points per game. So if you kind of look at it that way, they're kind of turning into their they're 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 turning their opponents into Baltimore every single week in terms of points allowed. And I don't like that at all. Yeah, I mean, I agree with the way things are trending. First off, Tennessee getting into the red zone is one thing. How they utilize uh, their players in that area is another thing. Over the last month, only two running backs have scored a touchdown against Carolina. So despite having, you know, uh, 16 total on the season, it's not just rushing. That includes receiving touchdowns against them. We only have two on the ground against Carolina in the last four weeks. So maybe things aren't as bad as they were early in the season. It's very bold. But if you guys do recall, two weeks ago, Tim told you to bench Saquon Barkley. So that's top 24. And well, that worked out very, very well for us. So I'm listening to you and um, I, I like the call. Guys, I don't want anything to do with the Cleveland wide receiver this week. So Amari Cooper is going to end up on my bench. I think he's going to finish outside the top 36. East Air Carolina has him at wide receiver 35. Despite a rocky start, Denver now sits fourth best versus fantasy wide receivers on the season, following being the number one over the last month. Cooper should mainly line up on the left and get direct coverage from Patrick Sertain, who has been a menace of late. I'd take my bets on Amari's talent still to put up a productive day with Deshaun Watson or even Jacoby Brissett from a year ago. But DTR is clearly a step down. Cooper has 10 points from five receptions on 14 targets for 50 yards in two games with DTR. And DTR has four interceptions, no touchdowns, and 286 total yards in his two starts. It's just not good. There's not enough volume. There's not enough production. If Amari Cooper has a good day, he's going to be 50% of this team's production, and I just don't want to bet on it this week, especially with how crucial this week is for you guys pushing for fantasy playoffs. So Amari Cooper, I am benching this week. Yeah, Cooper, um, it's kind of interesting. This year against on the road against road teams, he's actually had three of four weeks usable, but um, he's only had um, one usable week against a defense that's actually good in terms of allowing points to wide receivers. So he's done it against very soft defenses. And one other fun fact is that he uh, he didn't perform well in this one road game in a dome, which is kind of interesting to me. So I'm, I'm with you on this. I think it's going to be unpredictable. I don't think the ceiling has been as high as we wanted it to be for Cooper each week, which I, I still love Amari Cooper. It's just his situation sucks right now. So I agree with you that this is going to be a really tough matchup. As well, if we, we look at like what happened to Diggs, against uh in denver 4.9 points so are we are, are we saying that cooper is going to have a more productive day or um be more of a threat in the passing game than stefan Diggs is i'm gonna say no i i don't think that that's the case i think that in the this type of matchup there that the browns are gonna once again try to you know play ball control play time of possession try to win the line of scrimmage and and even uh field position based on their defense so i think that it's possible that Cooper scores on like uh, a short, um, a short field play, but that's not something I'm banking on. Just because from what we've seen, the ceiling isn't high enough week to week for me to really bet with a rookie uh, with a backup quarterback. We are in lockstep, guys. We're moving into our prayers section, the final section we have for the day, the fun section. These are players that you can either pick up right off the waiver wire and start, or they're players on the end of your bench that you can throw into that final flex for a flyer or to go fill in for those. Bye weeks. I'm going to get it started this time. I'm going to throw Tim for a loop, give a player, because I'm going to be a little bonus player at the end here. Tim will uh, be the sandwich, the sandwich meat in the middle for us here. Ooh. We're going to start things off with Josh Downs finishing in the top 36. ECR has him at wide receiver 36. So I'm right in there with him. I think this could be an even, even better day. The matchup could not be juicier for a slot wide receiver. Not only is Tampa Bay 29th to wide receivers on the season and 29th over the last month, but they've allowed the most points versus slot wide receivers of any team in the NFL. Josh Downs runs 78% of his snaps out of the slot, and it should be the clear-cut candidate here to fall in the footsteps of players like Noah Brown, Khalil Shakir, Kyle Phillips, and Josh Reynolds, who are all notable, lesser talented wide receivers who had productive days versus Tampa Bay out of the slot. So Minshew's only allowed or only attempted 27 attempts over the last two, but teams over the last month have averaged 36 and a half pass attempts versus Tampa Bay, which is the seventh highest over that spam. The defense is falling apart. They're very, very soft to throw against. It's just not been good for the Tampa Bay defense. It's completely different than it was over the first couple weeks of the season. They're definitely a team that I like to go out there and target. And Josh Downs is a 19% team target share on the season. I expect a higher number this week with emphasis across the middle of the field. Love Josh Downs. I think he's comfortably that third wide receiver or that, or that flex spot for you guys this week. 
Yeah, I seen that Downs is actually available too in some redraft leagues. If, if he's out there, go grab him, especially if he's free in terms of not having to use your waiver. When your own cornerbacks are telling you that that we suck on defense, as I believe it was Carlton Davis that said that, uh, I I agree with them. Uh, I think that this is a pass funnel defense on purpose, but they also aren't good on the back end right now, and it only creates more problems for them trying to stop stop the pass after being so good committing stopping the run. And I think Downs is a great play this week. Easily top 36, in my opinion, um, with definitely a higher ceiling depending on how game flow goes. Yeah, I think top 24 is is very much within the range of outcomes. I mean, he has two uh, fantasy points per yard route, yards per route run, and that is higher than Michael Pittman at 1.8 on the season. Uh, I, I just think the match is fantastic. He's rostered at 55% of the league, so as Tim said, he's still potentially out there for you in your redraft leagues. We're going to keep things pushing though to another player who might be available in your redraft league. Tim, who do you have for us? Yeah, I'm going with a player that's a little bit streaking right now, but he's streaking with kind of a lower ceiling, but I'm going to go with Demario Douglas this week. Um, he's averaging seven targets in his last four, 53 yards, no touchdowns. So I'm not saying that there's a big, big ceiling on this guy, but we have seen usable weeks from him. So I think that he's a guy that I, I want to slide in because I, I do like the matchup a lot. Third, uh, most points against the slot. Um, uh, and then he runs 62% of his routes out of the slot. And he's been top 31 three the last four weeks. So he has been usable already. Or, and so I think that with this matchup, it's a, kind of just a perfect nest egg for what he does, how they allow points, and that he can um, exceed his expectation as well as his kind of his ceiling at this point because of the fact that there's no touchdowns potentially. But we'll see what this offense looks like if they do decide to make a change. But yeah, I think I think Douglas is a sneaky play this week in a flex flex option, and I think he hits top thirty six. I agree with you. I like Demario Douglas. I'm glad that you took him because he was right in there. We love targeting these slot wide receiver matchups here. Uh, it is absolutely money, and I agree with you. It, it doesn't even matter for me who the quarterback is for the Patriots next week. I think it's probably Mac Jones, but if it is Bailey Zappi and he's good to go, I mean Demario Douglas is going to be the safety play. He's going to be the guy who gets open in the most vulnerable spot of the field against the Giants, and he's probably the most talented wide receiver we have out there for the Patriots at this point. So I like the play. Um, yeah, and I'm going to keep things pushing here with another small, small wide receiver. My bonus for you guys on the week is going to be 2 2 Atwell. Not very bold to say he's going to be top 48 here. He's here, has him at 52. If Cooper Cup does not go, I'm saying he's a top 36 play here. We are going to put him right into our final flex spot or third wide receiver. The Cardinals are 20th against opposing wide receivers on the season. But if we look deeper, they're 20th whilst only allowing 19. 18% of their points that come from the slot. So we're going anti-slot on this one. For comparison, when we mentioned Tampa Bay for Josh Downs, they allow 45% of their points versus wide receivers to come strictly from the slot, which is absurd. Um, but in return, Tutu's outside alignments should lead him to a good outing. He'll face up against Marco Wilson, who allows the most fantasy points per route run to opposing wide receivers off of the right at 0.45 per route run. As we mentioned earlier as well, for comparison with Ladera Sneed, he only allows 0.17 in his own position. So you are getting 2.5 X the amount of points per route that Tutu goes out there and gets you. Even without Cup, Tutu played 79%, 94%, 87%, and 78% of his team snaps. It's about 22% of the team targets. It was route, uh, targeted on 21% of his routes without Cooper Cup. He gave us 14 points per game over that stretch. I'm not pressed if Cooper Cup plays due to the matchup, but I temper expectations, of course, to a wide receiver four should Cup go. I think wide receiver three is pretty safe without Cooper Cup. I think Puka Naku is also just a smash. I mean, the other side of the ball here is a good matchup as well. It's just a good spot for the Rams to get things get things right here. I'm betting on Kyron Williams. I'm betting on Tutu Outwell. I'm not going to go out here and tell you to start Christian McCaffrey. So I'm not going to go out here and tell you to start Puka Nakua, but I think he's also going to have a great week. Yeah, it should be a fun game, especially what, if the other side can keep up with uh, Kyler Murray back. That would be very fun for some fantasy matchups for sure. All right, guys, but that does it here for us. If you stuck with us, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Help us get to 2,500 subscribers by the end of the season. A couple of things you can find in the description before you get out of here. A link to our Discord conversations going all of the time. A link to our clips category. We take on every single player, whether it's Dynasty, leading up to the season, or in season. Very easy self support when you go in there. If we don't have a take on a player that is recent enough for you, go into the Discord and let us know about that player. We're fitting in an upcoming video if we can. The last thing in there is the patron. You want my notes for this show? Every show that I do, I'm putting all of my notes into the patreon and i am we have our full dynasty rankings as well as a bunch of other bonus 
content. It packages their start at less than a dollar a week. Um, for JWB Fantasy Football, we are just on every single platform. JWB Fantasy Football at JWB underscore FF on Twitter. The Pinsuite has where you can find our full team and everything that everyone has going on. Go give everyone a follow. They do great work, great stuff going on here, and we'll catch you guys next time.